Fedora 36 is now available, and I thought it's a good time for a quick review of this nice distribution. But instead of spitting on the work of the developers for the slightest concern, I decided to only share the five strong points of this system. Let's go! When you open the Fedora website, you have the choice between three versions, Workstation, Server or IoT. Workstation is like the desktop version of Raspberry Pi OS, and Server is the minimal equivalent. Then you can choose the architecture, with an image available for ARM and Arch64 in most cases. But there is also what they call spins. These versions include different desktop environment, with one image available for each of them. For example, you can download an image with KDE, XFCE, Mate, Cinnamon, etc. You may need to browse a few pages to find the download link for your Raspberry Pi model, but at least you have the choice with Fedora. As a side note, there is a tool available to install Fedora, the Fedora Media Writer. But I got several issues with it, so I'm not sure if it's a good idea to use it. At least for now, especially if you are on Windows. First, the link on the website leads to an old version. I find the latest one on GitHub directly. Then, I find it was pretty slow to flash an SD card or USB drive with it. And most important, I got a weird error 9 times out of 10 with this tool. So, I would recommend download the file manually and using Etcher or Imager to install it. Once installed, you'll get a short welcome assistant on the first boot. It is mostly used to create the first account and set up your network connection if needed. One thing missing, for non-US users like me, is probably the keyboard layout settings, but we are used to this, so it's not a big deal. Unlike with Ubuntu, you don't have to wait 20 minutes for the system to be installed after that, it will start up directly. I tested the main version of Fedora Workstation, using GNOME 42 as the desktop environment. You can check out the tour if it's your first time on Fedora. It will explain the basics on how to use GNOME. It's not really specific to Fedora, so even if you never used Fedora, you may already know most of the tips. But that's a good add-on for beginners on Linux. I like how they take beginners' hands, from the media writer, to the choice of versions, and, finally, the welcome menu in the tour. It's a great point compared to other distributions that are less intuitive and don't help you at all during the installation. If you already watched my comparison of the different desktop environments that work well on Raspberry Pi, you know that I like GNOME. It's maybe not the fastest, but it's one of the best user experience. The interface is modern, the default design is great, and I like the control center, with all the settings at the same place. With this release, you can now switch to a dark theme with one click, which was a long requested feature. You can probably get better performances with a lighter environment, especially if you don't have a Raspberry Pi 4 or 400 with enough RAM. In this case, using one of the spins, like the XFCE version, is probably a better idea for you. Installing new apps on a Raspberry Pi, especially with Raspberry Pi OS, is not necessarily the most intuitive experience. Fedora has a great app store to do this, that works well on any architecture, which is not the case with all distributions. Anyway, you can open the software app from the dock, and look for any software you need to install. You can either use the search engine, or browse the different categories to quickly find the app you need. By the way, it detected that I was using a 4G network, and disabled some heavy features for me, like the auto-updates. I find this is a great idea, I like that. Fedora is often used by developers and power users, so they decided to give administrative privileges to the default user. That's why when I installed Chromium, it never asked for my password. Same things if you try to change anything in the settings, even the network options. It's not necessarily a good thing for anyone, and it might even be risky as they make it so easy to get started with Fedora, but you can disable this easily, if you prefer to use sudo like on Debian systems.
As a whole, Fedora is a good choice for desktop usage, servers or even developers. Performances are not excellent, due to the use of GNOME and Firefox by default, but you can easily find a configuration that work well on your Raspberry Pi model. I particularly like the overall user experience, from the images choice, to the first boot and the nice tools that are included. You should probably give it a try. But if you are not sure if it's the perfect fit for you, watch this video where I compare 4 other great options for any Raspberry Pi user.